G'day, a big owl story here with another story for you. I look at the mullet swimming just below me. I take my glasses on and off to measure how well I can see them through the water. Last attempt. It's called I Look at the Mullet and it is about how we can learn stories, it's about how we can learn lessons when we are in nature. And I guess nature is everywhere. So let's jump into it. If I make any mistakes, I'm going to keep going and I will edit them out later. Here we go. The land was steep on both sides. I perched on the rock surface and could see the slow green river running below. Above us were the towering gums, some dead, some a muted green, all of them humming with life. I look at the cloud. My eyes stop squinting as my heart skips a beat. There, in the brightness of the cloud, is the shape of an eagle. He flies slowly over my head, heading further upstream. His perfect straight line is punctuated by his white head, darting back and forward, looking, judging, deciding. The river expands below to a wide open area. I know there's fish there because I've heard two heavy splashes already. I have a strong connection with the black kite eagle, but this is not a black kite. This is a Brahmini kite. My enlivened heart rate is followed by my eyes and mind, slowing to a focus. When I watch eagles, I feel I am always gifted a lesson. Conserve your energy, but be ready for attack. Be ready for attack, but willing to let go. Landing is necessary to maintain your wings, but the best maintenance is to fly. Did you know some types of eagles will pull their own feathers out? If they lose a feather on one side, they will pull out a feather in the same spot on the other side to keep things balanced. Every type of eagle has different lessons to teach, and every single eagle on any given day is teaching a lesson. My eyes squint slightly as I ready myself for the lesson that is happening. High above the river, he floats in a soft circle. He circles again. Three meaningful beats of his wings and he returns for another circle. The circle hovers sideways across the river. My awe is briefly replaced with a slither of boredom as he pumps his wings for another circle. Is this the lesson? Patience. Okay, I've got it. I look at the mullet swimming just below me. I take my glasses on and off to measure how well I can see them through the water. Over my shoulder a butterfly gently scrambles into view. His turquoise colours bounce him straight out over the river in a dancing line that expresses absolute trust in his delicate wings. Increasingly I realise that there is a lot going on here. Another splash but this time I briefly see the mullet in midair. The water circles outwards before it reappears into water. I focus on my breath and immediately the deafening chorus of humming cicadas rattles through me. As I exhale, my mind is immediately taken back to the eagle. Is this the teaching? That there exists lessons all around us if we are humble enough to look. That there is no need to always look to the perceived majesty of the eagle to learn. I look at the leaves floating down the river. Splash! This one sounds different. Like a small animal has fallen in and is moving around. The sound came from where the eagle had been circling. I couldn't see the water because of the low trees. The splashing briefly becomes rhythmic and then I see him. Like a low flying plane he drones downstream. His wings wet but not as wet as his legs which hang awkwardly below his body. I focus on his legs. They look like malfunctioning landing gear. I look for the jittery white flash of a fish, but it's not there. He failed. His shoulders labour harder and harder as he gradually lifts higher. He flies straight up at me. Suddenly I feel very present and forget about my breathing. His white head looks straight at me, but I seem to have scared him. He veers away and looks for another place to land. He is now flying in a very similar circle to where he began, but he is much lower. I sit up straighter and watch with interest. Is he still hunting? Around and around he flaps in a nervous circle, looking, looking. He gets higher and is flying towards the tops of the trees again. Is he landing? Is he confused? He looks like he's caught between two choices. If he pumps his wings in the pursuit of food just a few more times, he could run into complete exhaustion. If he lands and doesn't eat, he could also run into complete exhaustion. Every movement of his light and agile body seems to have taken on weight. 
A few more undecided swerves and he lands in the highest tree. It is the tree closest to where he started circling. His wet body is on the river side of the main trunk and not too far out. The branch he has chosen is thick and doesn't move in the wind like the ones higher up and further out. His legs are wide apart and he stands still, exhausted. Eventually he starts to shift his weight back and forward and dry his wings. He stands still and I watch, and I watch, rest to fight another day. I look at the mullet, they are still schooling in front of me. The cicadas gradually reinstate their roar. A turtle quietly pokes its head out of the water. In a few brief seconds he works me out and recedes back to the depths. On and on it goes. Crows pass straight across the river, squawking judgment as they go. A black and white butterfly materialises and flaps around me. I have received my lessons. It is time to go. As I stand up to leave, I thank my surroundings. I look at the river one last time and turn my back. I look up at the tallest tree. The eagle has moved to the branch on the other side of the tree. The fish is smaller than his claw and he devours it slowly. There you go.